Right, hello everyone, welcome back to another one of my model railway videos. Um, some of you who've been following me might see me doing these um, PL11s, which I've been running for a while to test, and I've done a bit of code which I'm going to show you, um, which uses these PL11s using one bit um, address from JMRI rather than two bits, which works works very well. Um, but for me, I'm going to be giving up on these and turning back to the servos. Um, I've managed to burn this one out through the practice of the coding and I'm finding they're not very reliable at changing over on the um, changing over the turnout when they're being operated. So what was happening was um, for every about 10 times that you'd operate this on and the relay would operate, hold on for the 0.5 of a second, these will buzz but this actually wouldn't turn over. Um, but that's only like I say one in 10 but it's enough to cause a problem with derailing the train and if my Arduino is doing the feedback to change the polarity of the live points, which it will be doing, um, it also causes short every time a train goes across the circuit as well. Um, so I need something that's a lot more reliable than that. Um, I did put a feedback micro switch in, as you can see, um, which has got three cables coming out. They fed into the Arduino, giving a, um, a, a two, two, giving two pins within the Arduino. Um, an input to say what position this t this turnout was in. I was feeding that back to JMRI using the feedback um, part of the loop, which I'll show you some parts of it um, on the code. But again, that still wasn't good enough. The JMRI, the feedback in JMRI, I'm still got, got been able to get to work properly. So sometimes the, the, the turnouts wouldn't work, and sometimes it it hold relays on or chat them. And at one point, it held it on long enough to burn burn out this PL11. Um, so for the cost of the PL11s, which are a lot more expensive than than the servos. The fact that you've got three wires for this, and if you put three wires in for the um, feedback, you've got a lot more wiring. So that's six wires per turnout. Um, so that'd be six wires over the top of that turnout and so on. Um, it start increasing quite a lot. Um, it just wasn't worth it. Um, and then going on to the fact down here on the control panel, I've got the relay bank, um, 16 way relay bank here. Um, each turnout will take two of these up um, to control the PL11 plus another one to control the polarity of the turnout. Um, so um, you're losing three relays for every turnout, plus a, a, a PL11, which is a 10 pound. And then you have to have a separate power supply plugged in. A, uh, you might have, you've, you'd have seen in previous video, 16 volt power supply, um, which is another power supply added onto the layout, including my five volts that I've already got on there, um, and the uh, track supply voltage as well. So the whole lot was coming a bit of a mess. There's the uh, pins I use for the feedback, which just plugged into here, um, which will be part of the code. Um, so I, I'm well, I'm not happy. I wasn't happy with them, so I'm not going to be using them. Um, some people probably got lots of them and, and quite happy with them. Um, I just find the reliability is not good enough, so I'm going to be going back to the, the servos. So I'll show you a bit of the code that I was using, um, and then I'll show you a new bit of kit that I'm going to start practicing with it as well. Right, so this is the Arduino sketch for doing the PL11s, just using the uh, one address, which I said about. Um, so I'll try and go through it and explain as much as I can. I'll put this on my website, so if you want to copy it and you want to carry on using PL11s, fair enough. So the top part up here is just that everything we've been doing and every single other video I've done for the CMI and the Auto 485 um, libraries. Um, for this sketch that I'm using I've got two PL11s so there's four relays and I've decided to put the number four into a variable called number relays so I can use that instead of a number and that way if you want to increase the code you can just increase that number up here. Um, we're going to be reading two bits from the JMRI so we've got a an array here um, called T bit which has got two in it next to it so we've got two arrays um, and then we've got the outputs from the Arduino on pins 8, 9, 10, 11, which go to the relays. Um, so it'd be pins 8, 9, 10, 11, and I'm storing them again in a, an array called T out. So T out 0 will represent pin 9, T out 1 represent pin, sorry, get it right. T out 0 represent pin 8, T out 1 will be pin 9, P out 2 will be pin 10, and so on. Um, it's just a way of making the code easier to expand if you need to expand this. And, uh, and then I've got a T status, which takes the status that the relay was originally in and when it changes. Um, so you have one status for each PL11. Um, so the T status again is an array, and I've got two for that to set that up. And I have a Boolean called flag, which is a false. 
and you see in the code later this is used so that um, when I operate a relay to turn it on because it's had a one one bit pulse from JMRI it will st uh, stay on for a certain period of time because I had to put a delay in it um, and then it would reset it to the um, it reset the relay to zero after a certain period of time. Now the reason going back, I'll go over this. The reason why, why I put a delay in is because uh, JMRI was putting a one pulse out, but it was getting a zero pulse quite quick as well. So the relays are switching on and off within milliseconds um, because there's no delay in the Arduino code. Um, it is relying purely on the JMRI, and the communication with JMRI is not. I think I don't think it's at 100% guaranteed all the time. Um, so there's no way of verifying anything. So for the setup, I've done a for loop. I think I explained this before. It's going to run through this loop for the number of relays we've got, which we said was four. Um, and each time it goes through the for loop, it's going to change i. Um, it's going to start at zero and it's going to step i up by one each time. So the first one, t out, would be zero output, which is for pin eight. Set the pin eight to output. Um, the next time it goes through, it'd be one and then two and then three, and it set all the pins nodes out outputs. And then our digital write at the same time each relay to high which turns all the relays off to make sure that there's no um, accidental relays being stuck on um, which will burn out your PL11s um, and then I will go through the loop again to set the um, T status to false which actually I didn't need to do looking at the code because I've already oh no I didn't do it up here that's right I, it, it's a I'm right it, it's got to go through this loop twice um, because it's in array we see set each T status array to false so that we've um, ready for turning the relays on um, and then we start the bus which we need the communication um, CMRI process is, as before it starts up the CMRI communication and then the first thing we're going to do is do a T bit 0 and a T bit 1 and we're going to read each bit from JMRI that's it. so before as you some of you remember that would be address 001 and for this one it will be address 002 1002 now I did do this in a for loop, but that was giving me a lot of grief as well. Again, communication with JMRI, you've got to rely on serial communication the speed that it runs at. Um, so I seem to be getting problems in that. So I end up doing it like this, through it just a void loop rather than for its own individual loops. So this is for turn at one, and this will be for turn at two. And if you had three, four, five onwards, you just copy these and change the um, certain numbers that are inside the um, if function, if statement even. So the first thing, um, we check the T back bit zero if it's equal to one, which means which means we've operated the JMRI, we've clicked on a turnout, and JMRI will give a um, a boot a bit, what's that say, a, a binary bit of one for 0.5 of a second. Um, so that means it will go through this if statement, and also the flag acts it's got an end there. And the flag is equal to false, and as you remember, we set the flag to false at the beginning. So this will be the first time going through if this ever equals to one. It will digital write the t at zero and the t at one to the t status. But on the top one, the t status, which was set to false, which means it would be zero here, um, will keep the relay because it's gone to um, false. It will turn the relay on because remember my relays are reverse. Um, thinking and this one's got an exclamation mark in front of it which means it would be um, the opposite to whatever this t status is so where this is t status of zero this will be t status of this t status will be equal to one um, so this one will turn the relay um, one a bit off um, so putting this in english because this is false this will be equal to zero and because this is um, an inverse of the top one this will be equal to one so Obviously, I'm not going to write leave these figures in, but I'm just showing you what they mean. Um, so each relay, one relay be on, one relay be off, and that's what this will do. And then a delay for 500 um, milliseconds because I had to put a delay in to make sure that the PL11s did operate. Um, otherwise, I was getting a lot more false readings. And then we set the T status zero, which is this T status zero up here to the opposite of what it was. So at the moment T state zero at the beginning of the program was false. And because it's this is false, it's now with that exclamation mark inverse of false. So now T state is zero is equal to true. So the next time it goes through, this will become one because it's true. 
and this will be the inverse, this will become false. So the relays will then switch over. So you'll have a, a toggled effect of the relays each time it goes through. That, that allows you to have the Zernats then open, uh, throw and close all based on one bit input from the JMI. So uh, hopefully you understand what I've done. Um, it works quite well for this. The only problem I had was the mechanical work of the PL11, not the code. Um, it then sets the flag to true because when it goes through here and it does, JMI has put one out and it puts one out for 0.5 of a second. This loop could run through this probably um, several times. Um, for the Arduino code, which means that every time it comes through, if you didn't have this flag in here, it'll go through and go, oh, it's equal to one. So we'll toggle this, and then it go through and go, oh, it's equal to one. So it toggle it back again, and you'll have a relay chatting on, off, on, off, on, off, and you'll have your turnouts opening, closing, opening, closing, all because you haven't, I haven't set the flag up here. So the flag is it, the flag is equal to false. Um, it then makes the flag equal to true. So that it stays true until we set. The uh, JMRI, I'll, I'll skip number two because it does exactly the same. Yeah. So if, if, if the T bit zero is equal to zero, which means JMRI now is, is now gone to zero output, the bit coming in from JMRI um, up here is changed from one to zero. And T bit one is equal to zero, which it should be because you've not operated T bit one, don't forget. Um, and if you have operated it, then it'll wait for this to equal zero. When they're both equal to zero, it then goes for a for loop and makes sure all relays are switched off because you haven't operated anything, so that they should all be off. It just makes sure everything's off rather than picking out the individual relays you operated. I'll just make sure they're all off. It's a, um, a much safer way of doing it. And then we can set the flag back to false because we know that the bit that's coming out from the JMOI has gone, it's gone back to zero, and we're waiting now for another input from JMOI of a one bit. Um, it sets it back to false so we can then go back through either one of these when it's re-operated again. So this works, like I say, quite well. And so then I put in this uh, feedback loop, um, and it's only a um, it's only a program feedback loop. It's not mechanical at the moment on this one. And all it does is it um, goes through a for loop twice again as it gets this part of the code, and it does it twice because we've got two turnouts at the moment. And so it says that if the T status of zero because we're going for it the first time is equal to one which means we've operated this turnout up here yeah then we send a bit of um bit a bit address zero which would be on your sensors of jmi be one zero zero one we send it a status of one um, but if that same bit of zero is equal to zero then we send that address one zero zero one a zero um so just make sure this is clear. This, for the first time it goes through, um, if it's equal to one, which means we've operated the turnout, um, the T status, not, uh, not, 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 we've operated the turnout, but the T status is in, in status one, um, then one sensor one zero zero one will be equal to one. Um, yeah, so that's what that, that's going to do. And reverse down here, it's the other way around. And this, remember, is the T status. So the T status would be whether the turnout's closed, it might be equal to one, and whether the turnout's open, open phone, it'd be equal to zero. So it'll send back to JMOI to say whether the turnout's in a certain state. And it, it works um, okay. It works fairly well for just a sensor, if you're just doing sensors. Um, but as soon as I started to put the sensor feedback into the actual turnout code of JMOI, it's caused me a lot of grief. Um, so then, just if you do want to use this for any other reasons, you can, um, you can actually, what I did earlier, I showed you that. Um, Micro switch that I had on the um, turnout. Um, you can actually read the pins coming into um, your Arduino. So you had pins, um, I don't know, 50 and 51, I think I was using. Um, and then you could say that if pins 50 is equal to 1 instead of if T status. So you could look at the actual physical pin, which means the turnout is uh, moved. Then you can feedback. So you actually get a physical feedback from the turnout rather than just the code side of it. Um, so that's basic, this part of the code. I've got the code on there for the actual pins uh, feeding in. Um, I'll try and get this code on my website. And I'll try and add in the bit that I'm talking about, about feeding back through the pins as well. I'll try and get that on the website as well. Um, so if you do want to follow this, you can follow it through. It, it, like I say, it works pretty well until you start feeding back into the actual turnout to say to JMI, look, this is what the actual turnout status is. Change it on JMI to that status. It didn't, I couldn't get it to work. Want to know? Um, other than that, it works okay.
Um, you just have to put up with the unright reliability of the PL11s, not wanting actually to throw, um, which is the reason why I gave up. So that's the enough of the PL11s. So now I'm looking at these. Um, these uh, add fruit, which uh, are doing um, these 16 channel, um, 12 bit, 12 bit modulation servo drivers using I2C interface basically. These two SCL and SDA um, um, pins here, which you can see here. Um, if you look at an Arduino, it's an Arduino Uno, which we've got a, a, a forum. For you can see on the Uno, you've got um, SDA and SCL um, I2, I2C um, pins there as well. And so we're going to be using these two pins. There is another set of pins over here, but which I'm not using, so I'm using these. And I'm only using on an Uno at the moment. I've not looked up the Mega, but it will work on the Mega. And the idea of these is this will give out um, 16 addresses, so we can have 16 servos running on one Uno, two pins. Um, and I think, if you remember, we can have 48 uh, addresses on JamI. So these allow you to daisy chain. You can connect another um, one of these balls over here and daisy chain these on. Um, so you can have all of your servos controlled via two pins from your um, Arduino. And also, the beauty of this is that if you've got a big layer, you could dot these around your layout, um, so you've got less wiring, um, all going back to your one central Arduino. These could be dotted out around everywhere. Um, so the pins on these, um, looking at them, right, so it says there, this one's the ground pin, middle one's the B plus pin, and that size the PWM pin. Now, I haven't tried this, but I'm pretty sure, because we powered, you'll see in a minute, well, the way I powered the voltage onto these two pins, five volts onto here, which then gives you the five volts here for your servos because they don't come off the Arduino. And then the pulse which modulation is the communication wire. So I'm pretty sure we could run, forget about the, the five volts and grounds because I've got a buzz five volt line going around my whole layout. So I can just connect my servos straight into that five volt buzz line. And then I just need to run one, one wire to these for each um, pin for each servo. And that way I'm reducing my amount of wiring again. Anything to reduce wiring because it's a pain. Um, I'll update the, my website and the way I've wired it up. Um, so just looking at some of the pictures on here, you can see there they've got the 16 servos all plugged in, um, powering it off a separate power supply, and only a couple of wires there from the Arduino. So rather than buying from some places which are charging like 15 pounds or 15 dollars, um, these are on eBay, the PCA9685. And they're down for £3.25. Um, so quite cheap. Well worth probably buying one to muck around with for that price. Um, that I've done. And then uh, see whether it suits you for your railway. Right. This is the um, AdFruit website again. You can get this. Um, find this quite easily if you Google search it. I will put a link in down the bottom. And um, there's a few pages to show you the setup and specifications of this card. Um, but I just thought I'd show you these bits. This is the bit like I said about daisy chain. It costs. As you can see, I'm only using pins 4 and 5 from the um, the analog part outputs from the um, Uno, and we've got 5 volt and ground connections down across. I've not looked into whether you need the 5 volt connection down across, so that's something I might look into. I think you do, I think it feeds um, the voltage to the chip and for the run of the card, um, but it doesn't actually feed into running off the servos. The servos are powered here, as you can see, I've got set, there's a separate power supply here, which is a 5 volt power supply. And then you can daisy chain these pins all the way through to the next one, and then the next one, next one, so on. Um, I don't know how many you can have running, um, but it shows you there. You can have three, I think you can have quite a few actually. Um, and each time you go across and do one, you've got to change the addresses. Now they're done for these little yellow blobs here. And this is the bit that it's saying about showing you um, the solar input pin too. Um, so you don't need to do that if you're just using the one. Um, but each time you add another one on, you solder these out, and these give you. Um, set up the address for this card um, which is in part of the code so you can see then how you can address each card um, and there you go it's all, it's all written up there right so you get this bit of code which I'm going to go through at the moment the next page it tells you about installing the library so you need to get a library installed um, to be able to use this um, so if you've never done this before you just click on this link here which I've opened up already in the github tab up here um, and you click on the clone download and then download zip. There you go, it's just downloading. So I'll open this up 
and I'd also open up another directory. So there's my ad fruit um, server library that was just downloaded. And over here, I'm going to find my Arduino one, which is there. And I'll go through this one to find my library. A um, bit of a mess of mine. And this is the library folder within the Arduino folder. And then we just drag that and then drop it over there. There it goes. And that's done. So as soon as you've done that, if you've got your Arduino up and running, you need to close it down. Let me save that. And then reopen it again. And when that's open, if you go to Files, Examples, go down to the bottom. Um, if it's all gone right, you should see your library for your pulp whip modulation servo driver there. There you see, so it's downloaded. And these are the, um, there's a few uh, programs in here. I'll open the, uh, I'll open this, this one to show you. And these are just example codes that you can work through um, to test that your system is working. Um, and to read up and practice what different things you can do. But for now, I'm going to bring up my code. Um, I'll connect up my um, all my card and that to show you it working, and we'll go from there. Right, so I'm just going to show you the connections. Hopefully, this doesn't come out too blurred. Um, so there's my um, Uno. Um, red cables are obviously going to the 5 volts, and uh, the yellow cable there is going to the ground. And then I've got two SCL going to pins um, A4 and A5 of the Arduino. Um, and then these then go into the PCA card. So yeah, so it's not focusing there one I know. But the first one is the five volt pin which went from red to grey because I didn't have many cables left. The two purple ones are the um, the SDA cables and then the last one there is my ground cable connecting up. So that's all the connections I need to go to the Arduino. And then I've got a separate 5 volt power supply, which is just a basic um, 3 pin power supply I'm using for this one. I've got a bench power supply, which works. And then I've already got one servo plugged in, you can see. And then the pins I was talking about, soldering pins, were these ones down here, which obviously this hasn't been soldered. And I'm going to put another servo in, so I'm going to have one, two. And just to show you the cabling on the servos. Um, you've got a, a brown, which is the ground, um, whereas the orange is the signal one. So the ground one is going to go on the right hand side because the, this side here, where it's got all the black pins, is the ground. So I'm just going to plug that into here. And there you go. And that's two servos now connected up, ready to, ready to run. And we're now sort out the code and get it powered up. Right, so just quickly go over the code that I'm using to do these two um, servos um, using this new card. Um, it's quite basic bottom part, it's just similar to the servo setup that I used to do before. The top part's exactly copied from the AdFruit um, examples. Um, the wire.h library I've already got. Um, I don't know whether that came with the AdFruit library. Um, so if you do need to get that, you might have to Google that, but it might have came with your Arduino or with the Add Fruit, I'm not sure. Um, this part is the same as what it, they had set up. Um, I've got a serial communication because I'm going to be reading the serial communication, you'll see later. Um, PW.begin, similar to all the other um, .begins that we've used for CMRI. Um, a frequency of 60, not played this much, um, but it seems to work. Um, and then this sets up the two turnout uh, servos that I've got. So the first um, number is the address of the actual servo. Um, this will be the first servo that I plugged in to so be address zero. Um, and then the board address, because I'm only using one board, it's uh, address is zero. And then I'm setting the frequency to 400. Um, this is purely just a setup. Um, if you was running this on your railway, you'd have to get these figures so that you know um, what figures you need in here for the turnout to be in the right position when you first turn on your railway. Um, that's something I'll be doing later, setting these up on the actual railway system itself. So the next one, like I say, it's address 1, it's the next one on. 
it's still on the same board, so it's zero, and again, it's set to 400 for the setup. During the void loop, I'm going to be reading the serial communication from my computer, as you'll see in a minute. I'm going to be storing it in a variable called inchar um, so that I can use it during the program. And similar, like I say, if you've seen this before, I've used the if statements say if inchar is equal to 2, then operate the servo. If it's equal to C, then operate the opposite way. So this will be for the first servo. And then I've used W and Q for the second servo. So the first servo, if it's equal to T, we set the PWM of address 0 on board 0 to 200. So it actually moved the servo. Um, and then again, if we set it to C, we set it back to 400 as the setup was at the beginning, um, which would be similar to what you'll have in the layout. And then for the W, it'd be the same setting to 200 on address 1. And for Q on address 1, we'd be setting it back to 400 at the beginning. Well, that's it. So hopefully you understood that. It's quite simple code. So I'll just start up my serial communication. Um, and I'll bring up a camera of the servos. So you can see the two servos down here. Probably not great in focus. That one's not too bad. That one's all the way around. Up a sit better. Yeah, yeah, that do you soon see it move um right like the board's all powered up and when you power the board up that's on the five volt power supply coming in through here and the arduino's powered up from the computer um, usb um, socket um, but with it all powered up you can see i've got an led that's came on the board to show that it's all powered up okay so it should be working so if i put a t into here now um i can't remember whether tlc moved to turn out we soon one out there you go it does work so that's what moving that one over there Hopefully you should have seen that move. That was probably that one. Probably point the wrong one. And then C. Bring it back again. C and C. That worked quite nice. And then for the W and Q. The W. So quite simple really. Simple bit of code. I'll upload that into my website. And the next thing now is to get this to work with JMRI. So that we can run 16 turnouts from one little board. Right, so I've just changed the code now to so that I can get the JMI working on this, um, or the CMI, the JMI. So the top part of the code, which is this lot up here, I've just copied and pasted from my previous uh, loads of code. Um, I'm always keeping the auto 485 in it, not tried to run it without it. Probably would win, would work, but um, that's what I'm going to be using on my layout anyway, because it's run across the room. I have to set up two uh, variables. For the bits that are coming in, remember we're running two servos, two turnouts, so that be two bit addresses from JMRI, and I'm just storing them in um, T bit one, T bit two. Uh, the other thing we need to add in is the bus dot begin nine six zero zero for the um, bus communication I'm using, and then we've got the CMRI dot process to start up the CMRI, um, and then we read the bits that are coming in from JMRI, which we've done before. This would be address. Uh, get it right. And address one zero zero one, and this would be address one zero zero two, um, and they're going to be both stored into T bit one and T bit two. And so, the bottom part of the code is similar to what we were doing earlier, where we was reading the um, serial communication um, of T or C. And all I've done is change this part of the if statement. Instead of reading the serial communication letter, we're just saying if T bit one is equal to one, or is T bit one equal to zero, we have changed the um, servos accordingly um, and then the same for T bit 2 down the bottom so I'll bring up my panel pro I've changed the communication on panel pro to make sure it's working for this if you haven't done it before click on edit go to preferences you have to make sure you're on CMR at the top seal communication Click the serial communication that you've just uploaded in the Arduino port, which you should have known from the Arduino program. Um, C leave the same, give it a name, whatever you want, and then click save, restart your JMRI, then go to configure nodes, make sure you're on address one, or you need to add a node where it says minus one, put that to one, um, save that, and you should now have your communication to that with your Arduino. And then go to tools and tables and then turnouts. And then we're going to add two turnouts. So the first one, but remembering that these have got to be CMRI and drop down this at the top. You might have 
other um, stations, DCC stations set up to make sure it's a CMRI. And the, the first address was 1001, which is a bit zero. And I'm going to call it T1. Um, click create. For these, unlike the um, previous stuff that I've done, which was the PL11s, if you've been watching them, um, I've been using two bits. This is definitely a one bit one for this. And we won't be using a pulse like we did in the PL11s, we'll be using a steady state. So it's, it's always either one or zero and stays in that state. And then add another one for the second one, which would be T2, and it'd be address 1002. And then I create that on use one bit and steady state. So there's my two up there. I'll just bring up the camera. I've got it right this time. Alright, so I'll just expand this out so you don't get the code in the background distracting. Alright, so there's my two uh, servos down here at the bottom of the screen and my two turnouts up here. So if I operate the top one T2, as you can see. That's now operating the turnout. And the bottom one. So you see, it works quite well. The only thing you need to do now is to set up the numbers that um, correspond to these 400 and 200 to make sure that they, the numbers that you put in there, um, change the amount that the, um, the servos move. Um, so that they operate your turnouts to the right positions. I'll be doing all this later, setting it up. But you, if you want to go to one of my old videos where it says servo setup, um, and I explain how to do that using serial communication to get these figures, put these into the code, and then you'll have them set up for your layout. Um, so that shouldn't take too much to set up, really. And then just connect up as many turnouts as servos you need for your layout. Um, that's it for this video. I'll try and get another one uploaded when I get some actual turnouts connected physically to my servos, actually physically connected to my points. Um, I don't think I'm going to use or need a feedback on this system because the turnouts of these servos, these servos are pretty reliable in the fact that when you give them the voltage, they are going to turn the um, turnout. The turnouts are not strong enough to hold these back. Um, if you get your figures wrong in your code, um, these could actually pull your turnouts and do damage to them, so you do need to get these correct. These are quite powerful. Um, and then you see in previous videos, if they're buzzing and humming, um, just back off some of your figures and your code so you, so you don't burn these out as well. Um, but they're pretty reliable, so any feedback that you need probably doesn't need to be. What you can do, like I've done here, is if you set these up at the beginning of your Arduino code when you first turn your railway on, and make sure that these these figures here are say set for making sure all your turnouts are in the closed position and then make sure that JMRI starts up with all your turnouts in the closed position you, everything should be in its right status and so you shouldn't need to have the feedback so much but we'll see how we go with that because I haven't done it yet so anyway thanks for watching um, I hope this is uh, some help to you lot um, I'll give some more videos as soon as I can give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you like them and I'll keep making some more when I get around to time to do them